<clears throat> okay, number 66. The biblical truth of our hymns, another good hymn. When I see the blood. Taken from Exodus 12, 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, God speaking, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this is the hymn by John G. Foote. Couldn't find much about John to, uh, to talk about, which we could. And this is when Israel come out of Egypt, the beginning of the nation, by God redeeming them under the blood. Now anybody who salvation's in baptism can't sing this hymn. Because their salvation is water. Somebody who goes to church and by their attendance and membership of a church or denomination cannot sing this song because it's by the blood. And this day and age of the church age, repentance has been removed. The blood has been removed from Bibles and churches many years ago. And I doubt in many of the modern churches today, the blood is icky. It's sour. It's not their redeeming strength. And yet, for the nation of Israel, coming out under the blood of the Lamb, where there will be no death of the firstborn, and where Jesus Christ has spoken about the Lamb of God, would take away the sin of our world, uh, uh, take away the sin of the world, excuse me. And where Acts 20:28 20, says God's blood purchased the church, where the Bible speaks about the sinless blood of Jesus, where Paul said, Christ our Passover. Salvation is wrought upon Calvary's cross, where the blood of Jesus Christ, God's blood, was spilt for sin of mankind. There's nothing else can wash away your sins but the blood of Jesus. Christ our Redeemer, there it is, God the Redeemer of the nation of Israel, there was no Jesus Christ. He was not manifested in the flesh, he was not born of the virgin, but he was there as a Godhead. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross. So we're taking an historical event of the nation of Israel and we're applying it to the Christian applicably. We can do this, doctrinally. Our Redeemer died on the cross. He didn't die in a lake. He didn't die in an ocean. He didn't die in a baptismal pool. He didn't die in a church building. He died upon the cross. Blood ran from his veins. Blood ran on his body. Blood ran in front of his face. Blood ran on his back. Blood, blood, blood. Upon the cat of nine tails, upon the thorns, upon that, that purple robe that the Roman government put on him, upon the wood of the cross, upon the nails, and upon that spear that poked his side. Died for the sinner. Christ did not die if you didn't sin. Only sinners need to apply at Calvary. And I've dealt with many good people. I've dealt with many fine people. God's not looking for good people. God ain't looking for fine people. He's looking for sinners. Jesus Christ came to save that which is lost. There is no pardon without being guilt. And the guilt is a sinner. Paid all his due. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, least any man boast. It's not a little bit of God's blood, a little bit of Calvary, and a little bit of attendance, a little bit of works, a little bit being... No, it's all paid by the blood. Nothing else. Sprinkled your soul with the blood of the Lamb. There's that Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. 
Now Moses sprinkled the people at the Mount Sinai when they're given the law. He took the blood and he sprinkled the people in the book in the book. But God sprinkles us clean. And it, it, it's not, you know, when I would say blood came down from heaven, like like the scary movies and horror movies. But I am washed in the blood. The blood that was shed upon Calvary by the Lamb, capital L. Found in John and found in the book of Revelation as Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. And I will pass, will pass over you. You know what? If I confess my sins, and, and the Bible says if you confess your sins, but if I confess my sins, he, God, is faithful and just in forgiving my sins and cleanse me from all righteousness. So when I stand at the judgment seat of Christ, any sins that are in and washed and through the blood, they're not there. Any sins that I have confessed through the blood of Jesus Christ, God says, uh, for God, go on. Like the firstborn children of Egypt that night, of the Israelites, when God saw the blood upon the doorway, don't go in there. Don't kill that firstborn. Next. And when God sees my sins, I'm in trouble. But when God sees the blood, he sees no sin. The day I got saved, my sins got lost. Through the blood. Two. Paul says, chiefest of sinners. You know what? I'm a chief of sinners. And yet they're all washed. I can think about some vile things I've done before I was saved. I wouldn't tell anybody but God. And I don't need to tell God anymore because they're under the blood. Satan brings it up. My, I, my own self brings it up in memories, but it's under the blood. Now I may have to reap what i sown. But as far as the testimony of the blood of Jesus Christ, Judgment seat of Christ, they're gone. The sins I've done, I've done some wicked sins after I'm saved. I was a period of time, I, I, I backslid. Those sins are under the blood of Christ. And when those sins are recalled by the devil or myself, what sins are you talking about? I myself is the chief of the sinner. Never mind what you or her or him or me you don't know what my thought life is it's horrible and wicked i'm the chief of sinners and i still need to confess my sins just because i'm saved doesn't mean i'm done and, and complete and and, and, and finishing christ and i'm never going to sin again no no you see this flesh is still living it's still alive it's still going to sin you know jesus will save there's a couple people I, I sort of dealt with in my life, and God cannot forgive me for for what I've done. And not the exact words, but the words there too. Yes, God can save you. There is no sin that you have done that God will say, "Depart from me, workers of iniquity." I never knew you. There's no sin as you're living today. You cannot do the unpardonable sin. Don't worry about that. And we're not going to talk about the unpardonable sin. If you're living and bleeding right now, anything you've done can be washed through the blood of Jesus. Now there is one sin that cannot save you. And there is one sin that God will reject you. When you die without Jesus Christ, and you never put your faith and trust in him. Then Jesus will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But you refuse Jesus Christ. You refuse the blood atonement for whatever you wanted to trust in. But right now, while you're living and breathing, you don't realize we're guilty by sins even thinking about them? You know, I have never physically murdered anybody. I've had some ideas. 
And then my dears make me guilty of a murder. Jesus said, a man who looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. <laughs> um, guilty, Lord. Chief is a sinner. You, you're a sinner. You don't even know you're a sinner. Get saved. Go to a Bible-believing church and get, get the preacher to preach your hide off. Get in the Bible, study the Bible, read the Bible. Not just read the Bible through you, but read and study the Bible to learn and grow. And God will show you more sins in your life than you would not even believe you were doing. There's a sin right now God's revealed to me, I think, within the last month. Wow, I never thought that was a sin. It is. That just adds to my sins that I do occasionally. I don't want to do, but I do. Hey, as long as you read that Bible, study that Bible, and go to a Bible-believing church and, and seek God's love and seek to be a right fellowship with God, He'll show you you're a chief of sinners. Jesus will say, He'll never reject you unless you reject Him. And even if you reject Him, Paul said, I plan to power water. Let's say somebody came to you with a gospel, they gave you a gospel track, whatever. I don't want that. Okay. You walk away unsaved. You haven't died. Somebody comes up to you later on in life, whatever it is, and they, they tell you the gospel and all that, and you got saved. God is not going to reject you because you rejected the gospel before. You listen, you can reject it twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times. As long as you receive Christ before you died. Listen, as far as I know, April 21st, 1987, and then uh the 14th of april those are the two times i've ever heard the gospel ever explained to me according to the bible i don't think ever i had a gospel track there are people who have been told the gospel over and over and over and over there's one person as far as since 1987 i've been witnessing to him over and over and over and if he were tomorrow or if he were today <laughs> If he were to today say, Jesus, I want to call upon that Savior that, that, my, my, that Siley talks about. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Uh, I'm a sinner. You think Christ is going to say, no, I can't save you because you reject? No. Angels, and rejoice, angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repented. God will come and meet with you with the blood of Jesus if you come and ask him to save you. Whatever you've done. Whatever you didn't do. Oh, he has promised that he will do. He'll wash you, cleanse you, make you adopted into the family of God, give you the Holy Spirit to comfort and dwell with you forever, give you the fruits of the Spirit, help you, walk with you, joy, give you eternal life, bring you to New Jerusalem, give you a brand new body, give you no more sin, no more tears, take you out of hell, put your name in the last book of life, become of God, through God, through Jesus Christ, all the promises. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. If you confess your sin, I am faithful and just to forgive your sins. That promise. Wash in the fountain. Open for sin. The fountain of Jesus Christ, Calvary, ain't open to good people. And I meet them all the time. In a public witness. I'm good. I'm good. God's not looking for good people. He's looking for that sinner. Who is tired of their sin. Who is tired of doing the world's remedy. Who is tired of the devil's way. Who wants to come to God and be relieved of their sin. And go to heaven. Sinner. It's open for you now. Now it's open. Judgment is coming. Oh, day is a, today is the day of judgment. Uh, no. This is the day of Boy, I blew that verse. Judgment's coming. He that he that has not the sun shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide upon abide upon him. Judgment's coming, Christian. Just because you're saved, just because you're a child of God, because you're born again, don't mean you're not going to face a judgment. You'll face a judgment seat of Christ. 
and your sins that you've done after you're saved, if you have not confessed them and you've not put them through the blood of Jesus Christ, they will stand as wood, hay, and stubble. You never received Christ. You're trusting something or nothing besides Jesus Christ. You'll stand before God, the white, great white throne judgment. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you because you've never been washed in the blood. Show your baptism certificate. Show the towel that you dried yourself on. Show the pew that you bought, the pew that you sat in. That is your pew. Show how good you are. Show God that, that line on the 1040 where your charity giving. Show God all your receipts of your charity. Show God how many people you walked across the street. Show God how much food you gave to the poor. Show God how much stuff you put in, the, in those bins to, to the people uh, who, who have collect charity goods and all that. Show God all that. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, because I don't see the blood. You got to be washed in the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ and nothing else. And when God passes over you today of salvation, because you're not washing the blood, he'll pass over you. Not only will it be death, but the Bible says in Revelation 20, it says death and hell was cast in the lake of fire that, cast, that burneth forever. Something worse than death and hell without the blood. The lake of fire that burneth forever. Judgment is coming. I'm trying to remember that verse in Hebrews. All will be there. Now you may say that this, well, you know, Christians don't show up to judge, at the great white throne judgment. And lost people don't show up at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. But all will be judged. Judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Every single human being will be judged, saved or lost, washed in the blood or not. Judgment cometh. Each one receiving justly his due. If you reject Jesus Christ, justly you'll get the lake of fire. That's just. When Jesus Christ suffered and died and you reject it, your justice is you go pay for your own sin. And the way you pay for your own sins is you burn forever. Now, when you put your faith and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, you show up in the judgment seat of Christ and everything that's not through the blood, everything that's not done for Jesus, everything that's done for self, the world and the devil is wood, hay or stubble and you lose. That's just. You didn't do it for, for holiness. You didn't do it for righteousness. You did it for unrighteousness. You did it for mammon. And the praise of man and the praise of the devil and the praise of the world. You deserve it. And when you've done something for Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ, for the honor of Jesus Christ, for the glory of God, gold, silver, precious stone, you'll get a, a, a crown, inheritance, and rewards. That's just. That's just. Every man came in from the vineyard and they got their penny. That's what they agreed on, their penny. Some were upset because that's all they got was a penny. That was your agreement, a penny. Those that did not show up in the vineyard did not get no penny. Just so you do. Hide in the saving sin cleansing blood. You know where my sins are? They're under the blood, they're hiding. You know what God is great? God don't play hide and seek with your sins. Okay, one, two, three, where are you? No, he don't do that. He says, you go hide through the blood, okay? You coming to find us? No. You looking for us? No. Stanley's looking for us. That's okay. I'm not. The devil's bringing them up to him. That's okay. I'm not, says God. They're in the blood. You stay lost in the blood. How's that? God does not play hide and seek with our blood. They hide in the blood. And they, that's it. They're gone. Washed. Cleansed. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Your vile is wicked sin. They're all sin. All sin. Christ saves from all sin, it says in this, in this hymn. All of them. There's no wicked sins. There's no good sins. There's no white sins. There's no black sins. They're all sin, And they're all in the blood. They're, they're, they're hiding from God. If it's not in the blood, they speak out loud and clear. He's a sinner. Oh, 
great compassion. What greater compassion? than God himself left his heavenly throne and born in a manger where animals eat because there was no room for him. The world said, no, 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 no. We have no room for you. Sorry. And God said, okay, I'll still be born. And God grew up. And God suffered tears, pain, anguish, sorrow, sleepiness, hungriness, thirst. The devil tried to kick his butt. The people tried to kick his butt. But the disciples gave him a hard time. Judas sold him out. At the cross, only one of his disciples there and his mother. In agony and pain, the ultimate most pain ever man to have ever, have ever, have ever suffered. It was suffered through God, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we might be washed in that blood that he suffered in. And he did not quit. He did not give up. He went all the way to the empty tomb. All the way to seated at the right hand of the Father. And he said, listen, at one time he said, listen, I could call 12 legion angels. Great compassion. He did not. Great compassion, April 21st, 1987. When I knelt down at my grandma's coffee table, God said, okay, here we are. Son, look. There's another sinner. Angels, get ready. Oh, Lord God, the Father, I don't know what I said, but I said, Lord, save my soul. Wash me in the blood, something like that. I don't want to go to hell and all the angels. Whoopee! Jesus Christ is praised. The blood of Jesus has saved another soul. How's that? Oh, great compassion. Oh, boundless love. For God so loved the world. He loved. The, we love him because he first loved us. We don't know what love is because God is love. We didn't know what love is till we met God. Turn off the radio. Radio. They, they don't sing love this, love that, love these, love those, la 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 la. They don't know what love is. They're singing for the devil. The devil has no love. If they love you, how come you how come you get broke off their records? You get broke off their tape. You waste your money on their CD. You you buy their stupid things on the computer. And then when you get broke, do they love enough to, to give you your money back? Absolutely not. How about when you get saved in the blood of Jesus Christ and you say, you know what? All these records are filled, all this music is filled, it is ungodly, and you get take this music back and give me my money. No, they won't. You gotta put it through flames. Have you done something as stupid as I did? I sold my, my record. I, I didn't. No one told me enough to burn. I went and had a yard sale. How stupid I was. I didn't get what I got for those records. I got a penny, maybe a nickel or a dime or a quarter, maybe 50 cents, possibly a dollar. That's not what I paid for them. They don't love you. God loves you. And he paid for you with the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, loving kindness. God, I'm a sinner. Okay. God, I need help. Okay. God, I don't want to go to hell. Okay. God, I believe on Jesus Christ. Save, sign, seal, delivered. You're my son. Oh, God. Thank you. Oh, God. How merciful you are. Faithful. Faithful. Who on earth is more faithful than God? No one. And true. God, the Bible says God cannot, will not, is unable to ever to lie. Can God do so? Can God not do something? Absolutely. He cannot lie to me. He will never lie to me. He's incapable of lying to me. He's always true. Thy word is true, the Bible says. Find peace. Oh, that peace. Love, joy, peace. Art and tribulation and anguish and troubles like I am right now in. I've got peace. Sometimes I gotta check myself because God's giving me so much peace. Lord, am I really right? I mean, shouldn't I have some anguish? Oh, okay, there's the anguish. Lord, I put it through the blood of Jesus. Oh, Lord God, I got angry and said, Lord God, put it through the blood of Jesus. But I feel peace. The devil can't give you peace. All right, you may go buy a bottle of alcohol. Okay, I got peace. I got drunk. I got peace. And you gotta go buy more. And then you urinate the stuff out, or you throw the stuff up. That's great peace. 
You spent the money to go into a toilet. That's the world and the devil's peace. God's peace is forever, eternal, forever. Glory to God is holy and righteous and it don't come in a bottle and it don't come in, in a rolled paper and it don't come in sin. It comes to the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It is pure. The world's peace is temporal. God's peace is eternal. Shelter. That mean God's going to build you a house? You may be homeless, but God still give you a shelter. And then uh, John chapter 14 says, God is preparing, Jesus Christ is preparing a mansion, a city where a street is gold. It may not be right now, but he'll give you a place to, a little shelter, shelter from the strong. What's that shelter? Oh, it's under the blood. Ew, I don't want that. Where was the shelter for the Israelites? Inside that house, on the other side of that door, where the blood was on the lintel and the two side posts. That was shelter. Shelter for what? Death. You know what the you know what God shows the shelter of death for me? If I were to die, I may die. Rapture may not happen during my time. If I were to die, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Now that's shelter. One moment I am here and not even a moment, a split second of the split seconds of the split second of the split second of a time that man cannot measure, I'm with Jesus. That's a shelter through the blood. I will pass, will pass over you. See that Passover? That was the nation of Israel being redeemed by the lambs. It is me being redeemed, redeemed by the lamb. The Lamb of God. Through His blood. So when death comes knocking. And whenever. If, 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 if I. If I die before the rapture. And death comes knocking. And death comes and says. Hey. I'm going to take that soul. That God's like. No. You're not taking that soul anywhere. Alright. You can take his life. But he's coming home to me. He ain't going to hell. you be absent from that body and present with me. I will pass over you. I won't lay your sins and iniquity on you. You're saved. You've been born again. You won't go to hell. When I see the blood, when God sees the blood, when I, God sees the blood, I will pass, pass over you. Imagine what that was for the children of Israel. When Moses said, this is what you do. Grab that lamb, slay that lamb, put the blood upon the doorpost because death is coming to Egypt tonight. And if, if your door has the blood, death is going to walk right by you. And that moment when, when Pharaoh called to, to Moses, get out of here. Get out. Scram. Moses called the Israel, all right, let's go. And they come out of their doors. They looked at each other. They saw the firstborn of the family. And they're going on. They're moving on. They're a nation now. They're a nation. Under God, bought by God through that blood of the Lamb. I am a, a, a child of God. I am part of a church, not a nation. I am one body married to Jesus Christ by God, by the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. And one day he's going to call us out. And it kind of reverse. Because when the rapture happens, if he don't see the blood, he leaves you behind. When he sees the blood, us that are saved, he'll call his home. <laughs>